and I will introduce him with another limerick. For the incoming president of FIGO, we have high expectations of where he will go. Women's health is at stake. For a patriarchal sake, fertility must never be a sideshow. And with one word in your mother tongue, Vanakam, you have the floor. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation from ISWIT. Uh, and very thank you for the kind introduction and also the special welcome. Vanakam means uh, welcome, so you have done welcome in different languages. So it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here, and I'm just going to um, thank the Honorable Minister for introducing the subject and take you through some of these simple issues. So I'm really trying to uh, talk about the Millennium Development Goals. As you know, there's number one to eight, and uh, the topic is about the paternalistic world. And as the Minister mentioned, uh, there are a number of issues which we can tackle by simple medicine and simple technology. I'm trying to see this is complex technology. <laughs> okay, so Millennium Development Goal 5, as uh, Barrett mentioned earlier, was maternal mortality, but recently sexual and reproductive health has been added. And as the minister said, it's due to a lot of pressure from Norway. One of the issues when we talk about reproductive health is poorly understood. It means about contraception, it means about termination of pregnancy, sexually transmitted disease, vaccination for HPV, so many things involved. And if you can tackle all that, reduce the number of births, then obviously the number of maternal deaths will also come down. So it is quite inherent and uh, the minister mentioned about the one death every minute, and you can see there were earlier 500,000. So 1,000 women die of related conditions. It's like two jumbo jets cr crashing. And these are mainly due to very preventable causes by simple technology, and you need minimal cost to save the lives. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about those, what we call as minimal technology, especially uh, which should be ab applicable to sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, where the number of deaths are uh, maximal. We must also not forget the Millennium Development Goal number six, because quite a number of maternal deaths are due to HIV AIDS. And you can see at the moment um, about 7,500 get infected every day and 5,500 die. So it is also a major problem. So we had to try to integrate maternal health with HIV in sub-Saharan Africa. If you can diagnose them, treat them early, then they will do extremely well. Goal four, as the minister, honorable minister mentioned, is also linked because when the children die, the mothers want to have more children because to replace, especially in an agricultural society. And as he mentioned rightly, vaccination has played an important role, especially measles vaccination. And recently, the Gates Foundation has decided they should really eliminate polio from the whole world. As you know, smallpox has been eradicated from the whole world after Edward Jenner's finding of smallpox vaccination. Vaccination is a very cheap way of trying to eradicate, and child mortality has come significantly because of increase of measles vaccination, and I'm sure the polio will be eradicated in time to come. Now, to really get into the numbers and the Millennium Development Goal, this was the 1980 figures, about 526,000 mothers died. 2008, it has reduced to nearly 342,000. And there seems to be a glimmer of hope in some way, but the pace has to be accelerated some or other to reduce the number of deaths. So if you look at the actual causes of death, why mothers die, uh, about 24% of the mothers die because of bleeding soon after childbirth, because they continue to bleed from the womb, and if there is not controlled, they die of bleeding. 12% they develop high blood pressure in pregnancy, and if it can be treated, then they won't die. Unsafe abortion, 30%. Barrett mentioned about abortion. It's very important. They die of and sepsis is another thing, obstructed labor. So if you take 75% of this, it can be prevented, the deaths can be prevented by simple techniques. 
So the WHO has introduced what they call as a basic emergency functions. Three are prevented by injections. One is the, if they are bleeding, postpartum means after delivery, they are bleeding, you can give a drug called oxytocin. And if they are high blood pressure, if it is detected, you can give high blood pressure tablets. And they can sometimes have convulsions and die, and there's a specific drug called magnesium sulfate. If they have infection, they can give antibiotics. So three simple injections can generally manage postpartum bleeding, uh, sepsis, and hypertensive series. And three manual function, because the placenta or the afterbirth gets stuck inside the womb, and they get a shock, or they tend to bleed, and so the midwife should be able to uh, remove it, and also if they have miscarriage to remove the products left inside. And if the head is stuck, they can use a suction cup on the baby's head and deliver the babies. And that can be done in a very small peripheral health center. This is called basic emergency obstetric functions. And in addition, there's uh, two important other techniques. I'm sure my learned speaker next will talk about cesarean sections and blood transfusions. And if we provide for roughly about four primary health care centers serving a population of half a million, one hospital which can do the blood transfusion and cesarean section, you can save many lives, 75% of the lives. Now I'm going to talk about three additional innovations which has come in from the original WHO uh, discussion. One is a tablet called misoprostol, which is given for peptic ulcer. And that can be given by mouth, and that can stop the bleeding. And second is actually a balloon, which you can put inside the womb and fill it with water to prevent the woman bleeding. And where cesarean section is available, you can, just like tying a parcel, you can really tie the uterus and bring about this change. So for half a million population, you need four primary healthcare centers with basic functions and one with comprehensive function. But you must have staff. The problem is there are no midwives available who can perform this. You must have these medications I mentioned, and there should be communication and transport. In many places, the culture where the decision has to be made by the husband or the mother-in-law delays the decision to consider treatment. Then there is a transfer problem, transport problem. So they have invented bicycle and motorcycle ambulance and so forth. And once they arrive in the facility, there is some delay. It's called the three delay model, and that has to be tackled as well. Now, this is the drug I mentioned called misoprostol. What it does, actually, this is the recording of a uterus or the womb contracting. It makes the womb contract a little bit longer uh, within about four to five minutes and stops the bleeding altogether. And it is only four, four cents. In the UK, it's four pence. So it's a very cheap drug which can be given. And this is a balloon which can be put inside the womb and inflated. This is a very expensive balloon, but you can improvise it by tying a condom to a catheter and putting it inside. And that's used in a number of countries, in India, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, and so on. It's very effective. And Stefan told me that he has got a video made now to teach because you can, knowing the knowledge is something, what the use is something different. Now this looks like a horrible picture, but this is the womb. And if she is bleeding, rather than taking the womb out, that was the original practice, you can just put a suture on either side and tie it, like tying a parcel called the compression suture. It takes only five minutes, and anybody who can do a cesarean can do that. So the three simple things, using a tablet, using a condom, putting a tie in, in the comprehensive obstetric function can make a difference. So has it made a difference? Yes, in some countries. I'm taking Sri Lanka from where I come from, and there used to be about 380 per 100,000 births about 50 years ago. And it is coming down, and it's about 30 per 100,000 now. And that is because the number of health facilities have increased, and also the number of midwives to serve those health facilities have increased. Now, this is a midwife who normally has a bicycle, and one midwife is available for 5,000 population. And five midwives work under with a doctor to provide the care. She goes to the, in the village, she knows who is getting married, she registers people, nearly 80% are registered before 12 weeks of pregnancy, and she can listen to the baby, and she can deliver and also give the postpartum care. And that's the way, using those simple things, uh, and the number of midwives, as you could see from 1940, has increased in numbers to nearly 8,000 in and around the country, which has made this possible. Now, 
I fully agree with uh, the Honorable Minister in saying the only way we can really uh, remove the barriers is to give education for both boys and girls. There is no talking about uh, maternal health in a paternalistic world if the men don't understand the difficulties and the problems. So you have to educate the boys as well, and that's Millennium Development Goal 2. And also gender equality, where is the women should be educated in the secondary level, and that's Millennium Development Goal 3, because if a woman who is educated, even up to five years in school, the child mortality comes down. There is enough proof to show that. And another way of empowering women is actually to have community mobilization. And community mobilization is done by some organizations. This is called Women and Children First, a charity in the UK. They are, what they do is they get the women in the community and talk about when they should see the sick of the doctor, what is important for them. They are given some pebbles. Uh, they put family planning, bleeding, transport, vegetable, etc. They discuss what they want and some microfinancing, and they're empowered to do what they like. And the vicious cycle of poverty breeding poor health and poor health breeding poverty is shown in this slide, because nearly half of the world, in some of the countries, more than 50%, they are living under poverty line. And the higher food prices, unemployment, and uh, population expansion, for example, India has 18 million births every year. So unless we have population planning, then nothing can be done. An additional burden is made by the environmental factors, wars and conflicts, and it's quite important to remember that in natural disasters, the people who die mostly are women and children. If you have a tsunami, 70 to 80% is due to uh, natural disasters, they are women and children. Now, there should be global cooperation. This is the Millennium Development Goal 8, and uh, I think as the minister has suggested, perhaps from this convention, you will take the message about global partnership. You are from different countries and see how you can act together facing the challenge of women's and children's health. And as I mentioned earlier on, there is uh, simple things which can be done. And as uh, mentioned by the minister, there have been a move now, 40 billion has been pledged in September 2010, based on the request of the United Nations Secretary General, to form what they call the Women's and Children's Health Initiative, and that is going to help uh, quite a long way. Since I came to Trondheim, I had to say a little bit about Trondheim and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Since the minister is here, I'd like to impress him, saying that Trondheim is doing something. So those from Trondheim, are you happy they are involved in global health? Yeah. Oh, very good. Okay. So the University of Trondheim has got a grant and they are working in, working in Africa. And these are the type of communities. They have mobile clinics and they are doing. The issue there is actually they are trying to teach people to do ultrasound, but that might look a complex technology. But that complex technology is in a suitcase, unlike a big machine which you get in Trondheim. This is being produced or developed in this uh, university, technical university here. It's a, uh, PC as well as an ultrasound machine. So you can switch and immediately you can get all the lessons needed to arrest the bleeding or, or control the hypertension. All that can be put in there and it can work on a battery power from the car or Jeep or whatever it is and that can be made and it stands the surge of electricity and so on. So these are very useful projects and as mentioned I was very impressed with the headlight and I was thinking the minister might think about solar roof to produce electricity for the uh, areas, and computers can be worked sometimes by the solar power. So these are some simple initi initiatives. This will be about one-tenth or one-twentieth of the price of a big machine, same way as uh, the minister mentioned, simple technology, as I mentioned, six uh, basic emergency obstetric function, two comprehensive emer emergency obstetric functions, plus the additional technology certainly will help uh, to develop. Now, to answer the ISFIT's challenge about paternity society, Mahmoud Fathallah said, women are not dying because of diseases we cannot treat. They are dying because societies have yet to make the decision that their lives are worth saving. And this is a Taj Mahal where the 14th baby was born to a queen and she died of postpartum bleeding. And so men has been involved, so we can't say it's a paternity society. They have to be involved. And the thing we have to do as ISFIT, as a youth organization, is to accelerate the pace. And uh, 
make sure that the number of women and children dying can be reduced. And so I wish you the very best, and thank you very much for listening.